guys, it's Ty with Ty the Dog Guy on the Daily. And if you're not watching the video portion, let me describe a little bit. I'm out with my dog Chip. This is Chocolate Chip. We're out just kind of running around because it's winter and it's cold. And my little girl's in heat, um, which means uh, I'm not letting her have free run of the house. She's either in her crate or she's on her bed. And that, you know, just so she's not making a mess in the house. And then that way, you know, I need to get her out and let her run. And let her have some fun, because otherwise she'll go nuts. But, um, Chip, come on. But as I was out here, I was reminded of the power of proper correction and how to know whether or not you're giving correction properly. So, right here, you see she just passed horse poop. So, like I said, if you're not watching the video portion, you're just listening, there's a nice big pile of horse poop here in the middle of the road. And you're welcome for me showing you that horse poop, because I know that you're hoping for that today. Um, but when I first got Chip, she was four months old. She was shipped over from Portugal. It was the middle of the summer, and we would come up here all the time, and uh, we would do some hiking on Saturdays and stuff like that. Um, and she loved horse poop. I don't know how your dog feels about horse poop, but, um, you know, Chip was, you know, infatuated with horse poop. She thought it was just the greatest thing. Um, Chip, come on. Can you figure out how to get through? Come on. Good girl. Um, and so... You know, every every time that we would we would pass by horse poop, she, you know she would she would want to eat it. Um, and so of course, you know, I corrected it. You know, at first I was using the leash and he, uh, the leash, or, or just the leash rather, just had her on a slip lead, and I give a little leash correction, and she would get good at that. And then as we progressed with our training, um, we got to the point where we were doing off leash stuff. And then if she was off leash and about 20, 30 feet away, she'd be like, "Ooh, horse poop! I'm going to go eat some of that." And so that's where we went to e-collar training. So with the leash, I would imagine that I probably corrected five or six times. And with the e-collar, probably two or three times. Now, I bring this up because um, you notice she passed by it now. I think she's afraid of the horse poop. She passed by it, but she showed no interest in it. And so there's two main points I want to make here. Number one <coughs> is the notion that there's, there's a movement in training these days. Thankfully, it's kind of shrinking, um, but there's a movement in training these days that says don't ever correct your dog because it'll hurt their feelings or I don't know what. You know, don't, don't correct your dog because, um, you know, dogs are made out of porcelain and, and it'll, it'll hurt them. Um, she's not traumatized by poop, are you? Poop is just, you know, she just ignores it now. She's had a few corrections and so she leaves alone the poop. Now, when, when dog trainers tell you don't ever correct your dog... How do they deal with this? How do they deal with poop in the middle of the road? Here's what they do. They don't let the dog near it. And so they would say something like, all right, we're going, we know the dog really wants it, and so let's take a leash and let's kind of guide the dog away and go this side. Or let's call the dog away from it or whatever. Um, and, of course, if the dog really wants the poop, you know, you're out of luck. The dog's going to take the poop if you're not using any sort of corrections. Maybe you'll have success in, like, guiding the dog away. But if you do... All you are in that situation is you're not a dog trainer. You don't, you know, folks, you don't need to hire dog trainers to teach you how to keep your dog away from poop. Any person out there can put their dog on a leash and keep it away from horse poop. That's like the easiest thing in the world. There's no need for you to hire a trainer to do that. And, and because at that point, that's not even dog training. That's dog managing. That's a dog like, okay, we can't get the dog to not eat the poop, so let's just not make the poop available. Well, bad news, folks. If this is your style of training and you've determined to never give the dog a correction, and this is the type of training that you're going after, what happens when you want to go hiking up here? I don't know if you can see, but these hills are just amazing, and people bring their horses up here. There's poop everywhere. Um, and uh, I don't want my dog eating horse poop all day long. That's disgusting. And so how are you going to manage that? Um, and I'm not just talking about horse poop here, because I'm talking about everything that kind of pure positive trainers are trying to you know, trying to, to tell you, which is false, um, they say, well, you can kind of manage the dog's life. Well, if your dog is aggressive towards other dogs, how are you going to manage it away from other dogs for the rest of its life? Um, how are you going to manage every scenario in the dog's life? How are you going to, you can't, you know, you can't manage everything. Management, sure, it's a, it's a valuable component of, of having a dog and, and you need to manage certain things. But why manage dog poop when I can give like five corrections and she doesn't want dog poop. Now, this is the first time that she's seen dog poop in probably a few months. Or no, sorry, horse poop in probably a few months because we haven't been up here in a little bit. We've been extra busy at work. Um, 
and she had no desire. There was no correction. You know, I didn't have to give any sort of correction. There was no desire. Why would I spend the rest of my life managing her away from horse poop when I could just correct it five or six times, and now I don't have to deal with that anymore, and she's just going to leave it alone probably forever. Now, will there come a time if I get super lax with things and she goes after it again? Eh, in theory, that could happen. But it's so it's so silly and ridiculous, the, the lies that pure positive dog trainers tell you that, oh, you don't need to correct the dog. No, I don't need to correct the dog. I could manage her for the, you know, the next 12 years. I don't want to. That's not fair to me, and it's not fair to her. You know, it, it, it drastically affects the dog's quality of life because there's so much less that she can do when I'm constantly needing to manage her away from situations that, that I don't like um, rather than simply correct it. Now, that was the second point that I wanted to make is how do we know if we have an effective correction? Proper correction leads to its own extinction. And what I mean by that is if I correct properly, it leads to the point to where I'm probably um, probably not going to be correcting for that thing. So like I say, um, if I was correcting very, 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 very light, you know, let's say she came up to the horse poop and she's trying to eat it. And I'm like, no, no, don't do that. That's a light correction that has no meaning to her. And so that that correction will never allow itself to extinguish itself because, you know, her desire to get the poop is, or at least was, was way bigger than um, uh, than me telling her, no, 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 don't do that, sweetheart. And so the correction needs to be firm but fair, but it needs to be enough to where it leads towards self-extinguishing. Because like I say, if you're correcting for the same thing over and over and over and over, Chances are your timing is off or the, the, the strength of the correction is off. You know, you need to kind of evaluate certain things like that. Um, you shouldn't be correcting over and over and over and over and over and over, you know, a billion times. Well, obviously, that's an exaggeration. But you shouldn't find yourself constantly having to go back to correction. Correction, you know, done properly leads to where we correct, you know, either less or not at all, uh, you know, things like that. And so, so anyways, like I say, bear that in mind. I've used the visual example of horse poop um, to teach this concept, but like I say, this goes way beyond that. The pure positive trainers will will have you believe that horse poop exists everywhere and you just got to keep your dog away from it. I don't want to live that way. I want my dog going places. I want her at the farmer's market. I want her hiking. I want her traveling with me. I want her doing all sorts of cool stuff, and that's not going to happen if I simply never correct her, um, you know, if, if or if I try to take a uh, you know, a, a style of training where I'm not going to use correction and not going to insist that, you know, she actually leaves things alone and stops doing certain behaviors.